Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Melanin Margin, the weekly chat show where conversations about race are never off the table. We're your hosts, Quaviandre Williams. And Daquan Wilson. So let's get into this week's conversation. What's hot on the table this week? So the hashtag Prince William is a racist went viral on Twitter after the prince's most recent remarks surrounding the war in Ukraine. During a visit to the Ukrainian Cultural Center in London, Prince William said, quote, everyone is horrified by what they are seeing. The news every day, it's almost unfathomable to actually witness it, to see it. For our generation, it's very alien to see this in Europe. We're all behind you. End quote. While the Press Association reported that the prince also said they were more used to seeing conflicts in Africa and Asia, no footage of those comments can be found. Bernice A. King, chief executive of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change and youngest daughter of the late civil rights activist, condemned the prince's comments, stating, quote, horrific comment. European people ran roughshod over the continent of Africa, pillaging communities, raping women, enslaving human beings, colonizing for profit and power, stealing resources, causing generational devastation, and European nations continue to harm Africa. It is harmful for a global figure to express war as, quote, alien to Europe, end quote. Of course, this isn't the first time the royal family has come under fire for racism, such as the Prince, Her such as Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah, which revealed racist remarks from the royal family. So, Andre, I want to ask you: Do you think that Prince William's comments are racist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not Listen, even you like weren't even. <laughs> she was not even waiting for me to finish the question. <laughs> Absolutely, 1,000, 1 billion percent, his comments are absolutely racist, and unsurprisingly so. I mean, Prince William is a rich white man, a rich white royal man at that. So all of these, everyone is up in arms saying, oh, I can't believe he would say this. It's so shocking. How could he possibly? Girl, we've been telling y'all that shit. Like, what? This is a royal family that literally colonized the world. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? But, like, I have no doubt in my mind that Prince William holds racist ideology, just as I believe that every single white person in our society holds some of that same ideology, because racism has touched nearly every corner of human civilization. Um, just as I believe that every single person holds prejudiced views of varying degrees, because it's impossible to live in human society and not have prejudice. To what degree you have problematic ideology within you is wholly dependent on what knowledge you expose yourself to and how ready you are to unpack those views and ideals. Now, Prince William <laughs> does not strike me as someone who'd want to unpack those ideals. Um, he strikes me as someone who'd rather sweep things under the rug, wait for people to calm down and move on. Um, I, I suspect that he may make some half-assed apology and be photographed with a few black people to with that, you know, that uh, hey, see, I'm not racist smile on his face. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking I about. Am, I am waiting for that picture. <laughs> you know it's coming, bitch. You know it's coming. Um, and I do not think even if he did, if he ever actually did have an apology, if he ever does one, um, I don't think his apology will hold any accountability. It's gonna be filled with so many excuses. You know, the I misspoke X, Y, and Z, and I have always been an advocate for X, Y, and Z, or like I said, more likely than not, it'll be a written statement um, released by his team and his signature will mm -hmm. be at the bottom all fancy like. Um, but I do- With a quill. With a quill, yeah, with the quill. <laughs> with the royal insignia. <laughs> but, um. I do think that we absolutely need to discuss the fact that too many white people still subconsciously hold the belief, to whatever degree, um, that whiteness equals civilized and blackness or people of color equals savagery, like Prince William. Um, white people still have a tendency to view themselves as a higher quality people or on a different level, um, even when they're supposedly trying to be inclusive. Have you noticed that too? Like, mm -hmm. um, 
A prime example of this is when a reporter asked uh, Senator Mitch McConnell um, if he had a message for voters of color who are concerned uh, that they will not have access to voting in the 2022 midterm elections. And he replied, well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African-American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. Wait, ho- wait. Did you know oh. what I said? <laughs> he said, he said. Uh, not him <laughs> saying black people aren't Americans. And that's exactly what he said. And I want to, Daquan, this really brings up an interesting question. Like, do you think that the Western coverage of the Russian Ukraine, you know, conflict differs um, from the coverage and, you know, conflicts in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East? Because, I mean, do you, do you think that has anything to do with why Prince William's comments were so racist? <laughs> like, yeah, I think that there, there's a connection. There is a through line between a through all line, of this. <laughs> it is going, it is snaking through. Because I think that, you know, it's quite wild to think that somebody is like, oh, yeah, war is foreign to Europe. Like, that's not something Europeans do. And it's like, aren't the Europeans the people that, like, invented war? Like, let's be honest. (laughs) But I also think that, you know, it's one of those things that we have been so desensitized to, you know, different conflicts and Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, that it's just like, people are seeing this now in with the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and they're like, whoa, like, this is people who, you know, kind of look like us, like, that's a problem, Mm -hmm. because they don't have the same empathy for people who have darker skin, they don't have the same people, they don't have the same empathy for people who practice a different religion, Mm -hmm. and so I think that that is that through line between this conflict and the coverage of it and Prince William's comments of just like, people are so used to this like white Christian ideology being so pure and unable to just like have its problems or ha- cause conflict. And it's like, you know, there was Christian conflict. Like there was wars fought over Several. Christianity. Several. Several. So I do think that this is such a horrific comment to hear. I know that, you know, the part that specifically mentions African Asia, there's not that evidence that it happens. But even without that, even if you just stopped at the, this is, it's very alien to see this in Europe, that is problematic. That is something that, you know, you basically say that Europeans could never have this happen to them because yeah. for whatever reason, and when we think about those reasons, it's underlying that Europeans are more civilized. We don't go to war and all of these different facets. Yeah, I think it really is like the whitewashing of so much of history. Like, you know, white people have not been some of the most violent um, in the wars and in, you know, society. And it just really reinforces the idea because if you look at a lot of our media that we intake, you know, um, because media is a a form of, you know, um, indoctrination. Um, Mm -hmm. So propaganda. Propaganda, exactly. So when we see media, you know, the way that they portray Black people and the way that they portray people of color and the way they portray white people is vastly different, especially among white media. Um, And that's why why we also say, like, just how far the reach is of racism, because even if you are not being taught in American school systems, if you're taking in American television, you know, there is so much in it that reinforces this idea that white is right and black and POC is wrong or that they are always, we are always either seen as gang members, drug, drug, something, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, all these, all these different layers of stereotypes. And we've talked about this before in another episode. Um, but you know, there are so many of these stereotypes that indoctrinate people into racism and that tell them this is what it is. And Prince William is absolutely a product of that because in his mind, in his eyes, from the white history that he's being taught, from the fact that he probably doesn't have many black friends or POC friends. If any. If any at all. I mean, he might got one he might hire for this photograph that he gonna take next week. (laughs) Let's not even say hire. That person ain't getting paid. (laughs) That person not seeing a single... What, what's the money in your pounds? <laughs> They're not seeing a single pound. Bitch, shut your ass up. 
but yeah, but you're right. You're right. They might be volunteering. They might be the service for the country. <laughs> they might be like, yeah, you do the service of Prince William. Uh, but no, um, yeah, I think it's really. It's I think that Prince William is a product of that. Like the facts, it, the facts are like it doesn't excuse the fact because I mean you're a grown ass man. You can Google this shit. Um, but also I, I really want to go back to that whole fact of like you can't find the footage of him saying what he did, like the stuff that he did say. And like, we know that there's a record that somebody heard him say it. Like we know that it's been said, but the fact that the internet has been scrubbed of it, I think is also indicative of how we protect white people. How we, well, specifically mm. white cis men. And like, when you said, oh, it was removed or you can't find footage of it anywhere, that just goes to show me that this, um, this government, that their government, you know, and especially this royal family, um, they don't want to take accountability for the shit they're doing. Not at all. They don't want to, especially Prince William. He's like, bitch, I ain't seen nothing wrong. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? that? <laughs> <laughs> but and I, I, I really want to bring this back a little bit. You know, um, we recently talked about the Whoopi Goldberg situation too, and I kind of want to do a little through a through line here too, like. You know, it's mighty it's mighty funny how, you know, black people and indigenous people or people of color are able to take responsibility more often for what they've done and be met with such vitriol and hate and disrespect. But when white people do it, they can make some half-assed unaccountable apology and everybody's flocking to forgive them. Do you see what I'm saying? Like that shit mm -hmm. pisses me off to no end like and i go back to what amanda seal says about us being the standard us being the the one that we want to throw the book at that we want that people want to just get us to you know get us get a check this white this this nigga basically you know and it's just like it frustrates me to no end that the way that the way that our society even in even in british society too and that, that society too like um in all of it how how deeply we protect and defend white men and women and how safe they are in our society from any kind of responsibility or accountability. And right. we are not given, and not that we, not that anyone should be given leniency like that, but I think that the facts are, look at how, look at the reactions of the, even the Justice Smollett situation that we talked about before as well. Like, you know, just bringing it all together full circle, like, just look at how we are structurally, systematically treated in the in, in our society versus how white society treats their themselves, and how much um, leeway people like Prince William, people like Joe Rogan, people like Donald Trump, you know, who are able to, you know, and I, again, just to say this too, like you know, the fact that donald trump was able to take office after the things all of the things that came out about him way before he got elected and not got him and, and didn't get impeached all the shit that he's done if the barack obama did one percent not even a half of a, half a of a fraction half of, a of a fraction of a fraction <laughs> of a percent like we're it'll here burn it'll be a fucking at the stake uh it will be all kind of shit like all kind of fire. i mean we've seen online you know the way people have reacted to barack obama and stuff like that so just bringing it back to you know home here like i think that you know the fact that prince william is able to do this and i know for a fact i have no doubt in my mind daquan that he's not going to have to make any accountability for this it's going to be swept under the rug just like everything else is that white men and white women do and i think that as far as you know we all know that what he said was problematic. We all know that what he said was wrong, but we also know that no one's going to hold them accountable for it. They'll hold them accountable for it for about a about a couple more, maybe a day or two, maybe a day. Um, but a second. A second. Yeah, maybe a second. Um, a millisecond. Day, you'll be just fine. You know, that's privilege for you. Privilege gives you the privilege to make mistakes. <laughs> privilege gives you the privilege to misspeak. <laughs> And then you can chalk it up. Oh, it was just a mistake. I just mm -hmm. misspoke. That's that's all it is. It's just a mistake. Yeah, why are y'all mad? Before. It's just an honest mistake. Like, why are you taking this so seriously? It has nothing to do with race. Mm. 